Hi, everybody. I'm Mark Sepik, and I'm so glad that you're here. Um, this experience, um, I like to call your home is an orchestra. And that's the short title. Um, it should also say that um, you are an orchestra and I am an orchestra. As individuals, we can make so many sounds, not just with things uh, from around the house or things that are safe to touch anywhere outside your house, but also ourselves. Um, we, uh, we have so many sounds that we can make, and I'm just going to let you hear um, a couple right now that we will uh, try together and um, listen to in greater detail and elaboration um, a little bit later when I uh, move you over to the microphone. But right now, um, with nothing but oneself, um, here's what you can do. I'm just going to um, let you imagine that right now I'm stepping on the floor and I'm stepping again. And when you hear this sound, that means that I'm slapping my leg or the other leg. And if I do them both, first feet then hands, you get this. And if I do it fast, you get this. Um, now I'm going to, I'm going to turn the uh, viewer around so you can, you can see me better just to get more of an idea of what one can do with nothing at all. So, uh, well, at least you can see that part. So I'm just going to let you hear a little bit of the kind of percussion um, that one uh, can do with oneself. Um, uh, I'm just, uh, let's see here, mouse just decided off the counter. All right, so um, here's what happens when you've got too much time on your hands and you want to see what you can do in the way of sound and music. Now I'll do it fast. Now faster. And now I'll do a few of those. Now I'm going to get up close so you can get some technique. Um, this face percussion is really cool because you can play a tune with no instruments but your face and your fingers. So I'll show you how it works. When you open your mouth, watch my cheek. See how it stretches? When it stretches, it raises the pitch like this. And um, the other, turn the other cheek. Now, if you want it to be louder, you can gently pop your mouth with your fingers. Now, not with the palm of your hand, but just your fingers. So that's the basic technique. And then you can do all sorts of stuff. Okay, so that's, um, you know, the, the basics. Now I'm going to put them together um, with a little bit of foot and hand percussion and a little bit of tuned face percussion. And um, then we'll move to some other things. Whoop. His head was cut off there. Too much ceiling. Okay, fine. All right. Okay, 
say there's a little bit of what you can do if you've got way too much time on your hands and you're uh, just curious as to what you can do with nothing. Now, let's see here. I'm going to move back to the kitchen counter and let's look at some everyday things and see how good they can sound. Now, a lot of the best musicians in the world started playing on whatever they could get their hands on, pots and pans, tin cans. Um, so before we make a kazoo from a paper towel or a toilet paper roll and some wax paper and make a drum with a tin can and some tape, that takes a little bit of fashioning, not too much, but it does take, you know, some materials and some adaptation. What I want to do first is let you see what you can do with things exactly as they are. So, for example, it's just uncanny what this can make music or how this can make music. If you put your finger on the bottom of the can, you stop it from ringing. Of course, you take it off, it rings. So you can make patterns with the, let's call it the um, muted sound and the open sound. So you get cool patterns. More cowbell! Okay, so that's this size can. Now let's get a smaller can. What does this sound like? Oh! Do you see that? Look, we've got a big one and a small one. And the big one is lower in pitch than the smaller one. And we're going to notice with most things in not just music, but all sound, like bigger things make lower pitches. They just vibrate more slowly, so they're lower in pitch. I'm not going to get all sciencey on you. Um, nothing wrong with that. But um, we'll just keep that as a recurring theme. Small is high, big is low. Short is high, long is low. So. Now, if you want to make a bit of a drum kit out of tin cans of different sizes and enjoy the sounds, um, there's something interesting. Let's see here. Okay, right now, you can stir up. I'm going to move these out of the way. Now, you see this one and this one, they're resting right on top of the counter, and they don't ring very much. So what you have to do is put them on something else like a towel or a rug. Now here I've got a, I've got a towel, um, you have to trust me on that. And now listen to the difference. Here it is on the counter, here it is on the towel. It's like night and day. Night and day, you are the can. The can it makes me know that I am a fan. Anyway, um, so there we've got we've got two pitches ringing beautifully on the towel. And if you had a bigger can, um, or maybe a different one, let's see. Here's one the same size. Oh, this one is so low, cool, eh? So you see what's going on now? We've got three pitches. So let's see what can we do with three tin cans. Is that cool or is that cool? And I did nothing. I put a towel on the counter, I found three cans, and let's just see, just for fun, I don't know, um, what does this one do? Okay, look. 
It's like a scale. One more can. Let's see what this one does. Maybe if it's the same sound, the same pitch, I won't bother with it. But whoa! Brazil. Uncanny. Okay. Anyway. Um, that's still just stuff that has not been altered. Now I'm going to get some other yeah, things. Um, hi, uh, does someone have a question? No, I, I just I heard a voice there. Is everything uh, working okay? Well, I'll presume. We will presume that Jack Hoff uh, now has his uh, microphone uh, muted. <clears throat> okay, I I don't mind uh, jamming, and I I do play well with others. <laughs> but anyway, um, we'll see if we can get some of that together later on. Um, I'm going to keep on you know sharing this um, silly wealth, uh, and I will stay on the case. Now, with things sounding exactly as they are, let's just see um, what else uh, we have and what we can do with what we have. Um, if you want to make, now you've got to get uh, permission from the owners of the items, right? Um, so I, I did get permission uh, to include some more cooking utensils. We get a pot as a utensil. Whoa. Oh, interesting. Same sound. Um, what? Okay, so if look at this. Here's the same pot. Um, if I put it this way, I get this. Nice bass. But if I put it this way, it sounds really high and trebly. Um, so I'm going to put this, the bass, over here. And this one, oh, now, did you hear that? Look, listen to this. When I'm holding it, it's not ringing. But then when I put it down, you can sort of see the top of it there. Listen to this. Doesn't that sound amazing? So it sounds like a cowbell. But when you hold the handle here, so you see the handle here, right? Watch this. So it's, it's quite fascinating. Now, it's nice that it becomes more muted percussion. The same way I muted the can. Um, and it, it just gets such a beautiful variety of sound. So let's see, we've got kind of a bass, beautiful cowbell. And um, let's see what this sounds like, um, a French onion soup bowl. Oh, it sounds like crystal even though it's ceramic. Now, a, um, interesting. Oh, that sounds... Interesting. Um, so interesting. So... Yeah, man. So exciting. All right. Now, um, is there a soul in a toilet paper roll? Well, even before we turn this into a kazoo, uh, there are, are things that it can do. Now, I have, I've got this one thing that we uh, don't worry, it hasn't been used yet. Um, this was, can you read that? I think a dollar fifty at the dollar store. Now, um, this is a, of course, it's used to unplug domestic stuff um, and you'll right but if you take it off the stick um, you can pretend 
that you have a trumpet mute. You know what? I think you can do as well with your hand. Anyway, um, you can pretend you've got a trumpet there now with a longer paper tube. Let's see if it changes. Wow. It vibrates my hand like crazy. It seems like it's uh, from a distance. This is louder. Now, there's something else you can do. You can blow over the top and play it like what is called a pan flute. I'm just looking at this one. This one might have a better, a better edge. So if you blow into it, and then you blow into the smaller one, it's way higher. Now, wonder what happens if I put my hand on the bottom. See, here's how the pitch changes. done it yet but you might imagine say if this one is way higher in pitch than this one what would it sound like if I cut this one there it would be higher and then if I had do you see what I'm getting at you can make yourself a pan flute and we can look at that later once we've done the kazoo and the drum but wheels are turning now just so you get the idea of how longer things make the bigger things make a lower sound and smaller things make a, a higher sound oh absolutely um I'll, I'll show you a bit more of that now um i i just um i got a message that um my good friend scarlet is there and i just want to say hi scarlet <laughs> um i hope you're having fun um listening to the kind of music you can make from all kinds of things and speaking of you now long things and shorter things, so bigger things and smaller things, um, I don't have any other bottles uh, here except for um, this one. Um, but listen to this. Cool, eh? Um, there's a bit of water in there. It's, it's just going to go into the um, into the pasta dish, pasta pan. So now listen to that, like. Even now, I'm holding it freely. You hear all that sound, but then you hear how it's muted. So everything is kind of alive. Everything can ring, and the sound that things make can last. Um, or it can be stopped. The same way the can. Everything either rings or doesn't ring depending on how we hold it. And it's really interesting. Remember, I had to use a towel so that the French onion soup bowl and the salad bowl would all ring, and even the pots and pans. Now, I'm not, um, I don't want to take up too much time with stuff that you've probably already done. Or, or can do easy, but I'm just going to show you really quickly. This is a cast iron. This is a really high end cast iron frying pan. Um, really good um, for steak or panini. Let's see here. Get the, the tuning. All right. Um, don't have perfect pitch. Oh, sounds like a Zen temple. Okay, we're going to try to see here. Um, oh, hmm. Too cool. All right, uh, one more. This is the kind of like the Lollapalooza. See what it, this one sounds like. 
Anyway, um, that is um, a, a good sampling of the way everyday things sound. Now, you can also um, play these really beautiful glasses, but I'm not really allowed to play this one because it's brand new. We waited a long time to get it, so I'm just going to have a little drink. <laughs> Okay, now um, just about uh, the idea of big things make a lower note and smaller things make a higher note, and we saw that here, right? Um, I'm going to show you a few examples of that where I changed things a bit, but not too much. So. First, it was a, a little container, and I, I put a little hole in the top, I put my finger in the hole, and I put two rubber bands on it, and it sounds a bit like a banjo, like a guitar or something, like a, a stringed instrument, and um, now, if you get longer elastics with a, a bigger container, for example, this thing, um, they sound lower in pitch. And then if you get, let's see, this one might be bigger. Uh, again, I'm not trying to advertise any products, but this one has six rubber bands on it. It's just a, another box with a hole in it. And I put a pencil here for the bridge. And let's see here. So this, um, sounds lower than this. Play the blues, man. Um, they are cool, and I'm, I'm not going to get into playing them a whole lot. And this one is, uh, this is, is interesting. This one makes lower notes than this one, but uh, there's another reason I'll get into later. Basically, this one's older, and the, the rubber bands have got a chance to relax. So you can... You can make them higher in pitch also by stretching them. Now, that's the, the operating principle of longer is lower, shorter is higher. Now, um, I'm going to show you a different example of that, okay? But if you are... Now, don't worry, I am going to show you how to make a kazoo and, and a drum, but I'm just showing you in general what uh, what you can do with different sorts of things from around the house. And let's see, say you um, you like the way a piece of wood sounds. Let's see, um, let's see what uh, this sounds like right here on top of the on top of the towel for the mother professor. So here's a piece of wood, put it on top of the towel and Um, it, it sounds, well, I like it. Now there's something interesting. If you want to uh, make yourself a little xylophone or marimba, if you get different length pieces of wood, the longer ones will have a lower note, of course, the same way longer rubber bands or bigger cans, um, bigger pots, bigger bowls. Um, big is low, small is high. So here's a, a pretty long piece. And what you have to do is, see, if you hold it like this, you won't get the note, but you have to find out the right place to hold it. Let's see, I'm gonna get a, um, a bigger, okay, I've got a, a heavier, thick, heavier than a pencil. 
you can hear the note better when you hold it in a certain place. And when you find that certain place that makes it sound good, then if you, if you rest it on something at that place, then it will always sound good. So just pretend that you had six pieces of wood, longer and shorter. What I did was I drilled a hole at that place that lets it sound good. So if you want to make yourself um, a little xylophone or a marimba, if you know you have the ability to make a hole and you know put a frame with nails sticking out, you rest it on that frame with the nails, then you will have a xylophone that you can carry around. And I did that, and uh, here it is. Over here, it looks like this. Um, it cost about two dollars worth of wood, and it took me about an hour to make. But you know that that presumes that you have some tools, or um, you know someone with tools. And um, it's really interesting. So here are the notes. So you hear how they get higher as they get shorter. And the same way that things won't ring if you just put them on a hard surface, the same is true with xylophones. So what I did was I put, you see this uh, black strip there? That, I'm gonna come up and just put a point of information. Um, here we are, all comfortable in the kitchen. I uh, here it is, and I put this foam there, so it always lets the keys ring. Now I'll put the key back in there, and uh, here we go. Now an another thing. Um, when you're, you know, the same, well, it is in a similar way to big things being lower and short things being higher, um, bigger things also need to move more. So I wouldn't use a pencil like this, the way I used for the bowl or the tin can. It works, but um, this is a, a, you know, a heavier step than a pencil. This gives more sound. Um, so it's good to just decide on the right kind of drumstick to use. Okay, um, a little bit more about um, the phase percussion. Now, if you play a lot of this and you, you, you turn the other cheek, um, your cheeks can get a little red, you know? So if you want, watch this. You can get a wooden spoon and let the wooden spoon be your cheeky representative. Now, what is the better stick for the wooden spoon? Let's see. I think the pencil is, is pretty good. really funky and fun. So I, I hope that uh, that makes that clear. And if you are interested in something else that cans can do, just before we get to the drum and kazoo, check this out. If you just take the top and bottom off one can, and then you put it on another, you're gonna make the note lower and it'll sound more like a bass. And then if you took the bottom off this one and added it, it would be even lower. And then with this one, do you want to see if I can make it power? Oh, let's see. Well, I don't know. Well, at least it's not expensive China. 
Can I have a drum roll, please? The Tower of Babel. Okay, so if you made it that long, it would be a really cool sounding, it, kind of like a, like a bell, but a low tone bell. And I have made some, I'm just gonna let you see. Now, this is getting into, again, um, the situation where you have some tools, but you don't need a lot. All you have to have is a can opener and some tape. You leave the bottom on the bottom one, and then every one that you add after that, you take the bottom off. So um, I'll let you, here, what these sound like. Here's this one, it's that long, and I, I colored it red. Now here's another one, shorter, right? So it's going to be a higher pitch. And then this one, is in between so this one here is longer this is the big kahuna and the cool thing is this you can play it on a towel like this you can play it on your knee or the cool thing that i never expected is this you can put them together well i'm just going to hold three because whoop, i've only got two hands but you can blow over the top of them like a pan flute anyway more more coolness more uncanny coolness the pot and the pan agree um, last thing, um, I always wanted to have a harp and um, there was a tree that was uh, growing too close to our house years ago, so I had to cut down the tree, but I recycled it as a fence in the backyard and I always wanted a harp, so I, um, I put some nails and screws on it and I strung it with fishing line on this side and with weed whacker cord on this side. And um, here's what it looks like up close. And here's what it sounds like. You have been granted three wishes. And here's the, the base side strung with weed whacker. All it is is a bunch of screws and the, the side of a couple of branches, and then you just string it up with that. And of course, some people like to have too much fun, so I put an electric pickup into it, and now it goes to 11. Okay, I think it's time, as promised, to make a kazoo. So, I believe um, that some information was given out uh, concerning the materials and tools that are required. So um, what you need is a piece of wax paper, a toilet paper roll, a rubber band, and a hole punch. Now if you don't have a hole punch, um, you Excuse me, you can carefully use scissors, but you have to be very careful to put um, one, two, or three holes, at least one, near the end of the toilet paper roll. Let's see. I think, um, I think this one is a bit more sturdy. So I'm going to use that one and get the piece of wax paper. And I'm going to make it a little extra big, like way bigger than I need, but that way I don't have to worry, you know, if I make a mistake with the cutting of it. Um, now, first, you punch the hole at the end, and then just beside it, 
maybe an inch or not quite an inch away, I would put another one. And then um, the same distance apart, do one more. And uh, that way you've got one hole to let the air out all the time. And then these two holes to control an aspect of the sound. And uh, I think you'll be delighted with the sound control aspect. Now you put the wax paper on the other end, not the end where you put the holes. Then you put a rubber band around it. Now this is a little bit loose, so I'm going to get it and loop it around that way. And now it's double strength. <laughs> and um, then you just open this up and you don't have to, but um, like rather than leave it like that, I like to give it a, a bit of a haircut. So um, here we go. And uh, now it kind of looks like a, you know, a, a, an old fashioned bathing cap or a, I don't know, hillbilly or a pork pie hat. Anyway, um, if you can hum or go ooh, then you can play a kazoo. So here we go. Actually, the ooh is better. You hear that cool buzz, that vibration? Well, um, now this is the fun part about these two side holes. Listen to this. If you close the holes and go ooh, you'll get one sound. And then when you open up the holes, you get another sound. Someone is asking, am I playing music? Um, set up professional audio in audio settings. Well, I'm not playing music yet. This is just a bit of a demonstration. So I'm going to take this over to the microphone later and we'll get into the details. But there is... Um, the kazoo, and um, I am um, going to now, um, you know, give you, you know, a little bit of time uh, to, uh, if you have that stuff there, what I'm wondering now is, um, does anyone uh, want, want some more time to, to make a kazoo and experiment with it? Because then we can just bring the kazoo over to the mic and you can, because we want to play these things. Um, what I was thinking of doing is just letting you see how to make it as long as that was clear enough and, you know, let you do so. And um, then I am going to make, just to show you how to make a drum, um, two ways to make a drum out of a can. And um, that's what, if that's cool, that's what I'm going to do now. It is really quite a simple and comfortable. Um, making these two kinds of drums with a can. So one, it depends. The ideal thing would be if you had two or three cans, um, then you can make both kinds of drums. Um, even if you just have one can, you can make one of them. I'll show you that quickly. You know how different sizes had different notes? Well, you can also change the note, but you need a hammer. So what I'm going to do, um, is tune the can with the hammer. So here it is. And if I, I hammer it a bit, you'll hear the note change. You can even do it in mid-air. Maybe you heard it getting higher in pitch. Yeah, it's a lot higher in pitch now. So now um, if I had just one can and that was the note I liked, that would be it. But 
you can imagine here I've got five. Now I'm not gonna go crazy here with the you know, five different notes, but if I wanted to, I could. So if you want to experiment and collect some cans, you have to have them upside down like this, have your hammer. And the what I find is the more you hammer it down, the higher the pitch will be. And you can just have a, just a delightful experiment. Um, I, uh, I don't have it here with me because there's only so much space in our new home, but I've got, I call it a picano. It's, it's a, three octaves of a, of a piano made not with peach cans, but with big coffee cans, like one kilogram cans, and they sound really good. Uh, maybe another time, um, but um, right now, so you've got the idea to make steel drums, you just put them there, put them on a towel, and you're good to go. Now the um, drum that I want to show you how to make with tape, I'm going to do that now. You have to, however, I'm going to, not like you need a demonstration, but I've got to get my can opener. Now, you, you might, you might think that this is a little, a little too much while he's demonstrating how to open a can. Well, it's, it's a safety concern. And I'm, uh, I'm sincere about that. So, this is really important. You have to get the bottom off the can. And the problem with can openers is that some of them leave a very sharp edge. And you can really cut yourself badly. Um, with the edge of a tin can when you use certain can openers. This is an old-fashioned can opener, and the, uh, the evidence, before you even touch it, is that you see the, the rim here, see where my, with the shiny part there? The rim has to stay intact. It's very important. So, um, only use a can opener that leaves the rim intact. Not only is it more safe, it's also more solid and I, I've got drums that I made years ago that still sound really good. But here I go. I'm using, I'm only demonstrating this for safety. Whoop. Come on, you. Wow, this is quite the resilient can. All right, now, okay, now here is something else that's also very important from the point of view of safety. Okay, I'm getting up really close because this is really important. Um, where you first make contact with the alien species. Now, when you first make contact with the can opener, do you see what my finger is touching there? This little tooth, it's like a, a sharp little metal tooth. Um, that can prick your finger, so you have to squeeze it down. I'm squeezing it down with some pliers, and now it's, it's safe, okay? So whether you tap it down with a hammer or something, you, you have to do whatever is necessary just to, you know, make that little tooth go away. And that's done. Okay, so there's our, our safety feature. And uh, of course, you know, as we say in, in the trays, safety first. Now, um, what we're going to do is, I just hit the tape on myself. Anyway, uh, we'll start with some duct tape. Um, uh, but here we are. So I'm going to start with some duct tape. And what I like to do is put duct tape 
around the rim first and go around the rim a few times. And the reason for that is that we have to play this drum with our fingers, not with a, a stick, because we're going to make the drum skin out of tape. All we're going to use is packing tape. So if you just play it with your fingers, um, it will last indefinitely. I've got one that I made in 2002, and it still sounds great. So here's once around, and I'm gonna go. Uh, I'm gonna go twice around with the duct tape, if you want. And sometimes I've gone even more than twice around, depending on what kind of tape I'm using. And um, then you wrap it around the rim, just to scrunch it in, and and then it's softer on your fingers, especially young fingers. Now. Uh, I'm going to make a few cuts here and it just makes it easy to fold it in. So I have a couple of inches, I make a cut there and uh, okay, one, two, uh, three, four, five, and um, I'm just squeezing it in well. Okay, can up the left in. Now I'm getting this good old clear packing tape. And um, what I do is basically I, I, I cover the top with the tape. So I'm going to let you see. I just go right, right across the top of the can. I'm going to try to, you see it, there's a reflection of the tape there. I'm making sure that I can reflect it so you see where it is. And then I, I bring it all the way down along the side and then inside under the bar. And now I'm going to do one more thing. I'm going to um, stretch it like this. See how the uh, can, It's of course it's round. Now I'm going to, I'm going to come close, but this is a, a little bit of a... This is a bit of a detail here, so I'm, I'm coming closer, okay? And you can see what I'm doing. You see how the, the can is flexing a bit? So it's not a perfect circle anymore. It's more, it's a little bit oval. Um, so then I go down the bottom and I'm gonna, you know, a little bit um, funny, but I think it's better to err on the side of detail. Um, so here, I'm just going to cut it there. And now, you see this part here <laughs> where I'm holding the tape? The hardest thing is to find the end of the tape again. So if you put it to the side like this, this is <laughs> it's funny, but um, let's see here. I'm going to put it in a way that you can see. see I'm, I'm going to the side like that, and it sticks out. Now I'll always find it for, for the next one. Okay, so now I, I've got it all the way around like this, right? I go under there and uh, I have to put a piece across it now. And you can think of it like a, like a plus sign or like a letter T. And then I'm gonna make an X on top of that or a multiplication sign. So I'm going to do that really quick over there. Okay. Now, going across. There I am. I hope it's clear enough. I've got the cross piece there. I'm going vertically across it. I'm going to squeeze the can again. Now it's a circle again. So again, just going to cover it. Keep the end in view. So do that again. Two more and we have a drum skin. Now I've got the T, here comes the X. 
or I've got the plus, here comes the times. Same thing. Now um, I just need one more and we've got a drum skin. Okay, now let's see what it sounds like. Sounds like a drum. Now I do have to show you one thing. Because I've got four pieces here, they overlap in the middle and the middle is very strong, but the sides, the edges, only have one layer of tape. And, <laughs> um, and um, if you play on the edge a lot, it might you know, get damaged. So if we put a piece here and here and here, then the edge will be strong too, just as strong as the middle. And that's why I've got, well, um, it'll be 2022 in a few weeks. What, what, in 13, 18 days, it'll be 2022. And this drum I've got, I made in 2002. Uh, so it still sounds good after 20 years with the exact same skin. And um, that's why it lasted, because I made the edges strong. I'm going to do that very quickly right now. I'm not going to get into a big demo uh, with it. Um, as long as you know, I'm just putting the tape on the edge, okay? I think uh, that's clear enough, because I would like to get on to some other things. And uh, it give you a chance for some questions and answers at some point. And I also want to demonstrate some other fun music and uh, other ways that we can have musical fun if we use um, a, a few sound effects. So let's see here, there's one piece, just two more. Right here. One more piece. Let's see here. Well, one of my um, musical colleagues is teasing me. Uh, anyone wants to? If anyone wants to make wardrobe suggestions, um, they'll have to go through Figment Toronto. Okay, now I've got the sides as strong as the middle, or the edges. And, um, you know, there's one more thing um, I think it is worth letting you see. Um, right now, the, this drum is whatever it is, six inches, you know, long. Um, I am going to, as quick as I can, I'm going to get the bottom off uh, this can of tomatoes and because what if you wanted more than one drum, you know? Uh, you could make one with one can, but you can make another one with one can and then add a second can to it like this. And all you have to do is tape it to the bottom. Now I don't have perfect pitch, what I'm going to do is I'm I think that I think that's a high G, um, just below uh, just below eight four forty. What the heck? Sorry, folks. 
I thought the way it's right here, to the way up, follow that. Perfect pitch. It's a high G just before A440. So, um, let's see what pitch it changes to when I add this can to it. Drum roll, please. You can unmute yourselves. Or <laughs> I wouldn't mind hearing a drum roll. A little, little pomp and circumstance never hurt. <laughs> anyway, okay, stay here. Um, let me just tack this thing in place. And it's duct tape. I hope it comes off the furniture. Good thing that I'm alone in the kitchen. Okay. So I put a piece there. Then I put a piece here on the other side to make a more bass sounding drum. Um, two more pieces to make it really solid. Okay, but you still have to put a piece all the way around. Um, I'll, uh, I'll do that with the same tape. And I'm really wondering, what pitch are we going to get when we add this? It's going to be lower than G. What will it be? Good, duct tape, holy sheesh, it is strong. Okay, so it was, it was this, that G above middle C now. Wow! It went down a whole octave, that is so cool. Let's see. Now, um, now here's how, I mean, this is kind of funny. Um, let's see. Uh, I'm going to, let's see here. Uh, it just happened to be in tune with my harmonica. So let's have a little bit of tin can blues. Receptive or it's raised in pitch. It's not G an octave below. Okay, it's it's somewhere in between C and D flat. Uh, anyway, enough geek language. Um, I um, am wondering. Uh, I know we we've got you know we've got a, a team. Uh, we're all working together, but. Right now, as uh, we've done the, oh, actually, uh, this is cool. We, we've done the kazoo um, and we've done the drum. Now, um, I, you know, we've all heard about multitasking and depending on what kind of tasks you're trying to combine, you can do great work or you can put yourself and other people in danger if you, you know, do bad multitasking, like texting while driving, of course. Um, now, but one good uh, kind of multitasking is seeing what kinds of musical sounds you can make with two or three different things at once. So uh, here's the drum. Now, I was playing harmonica there, but I needed to hold it in my hand. But with the kazoo, I can just hold the kazoo in my mouth. right in tune with the drum. Now, what if I had a shaker, maybe I could hold the drum between my knees, play this, hold it in my mouth and hold the shaker in my hand. I could be playing three instruments at once. That would be multitasking. It is fun and safe at the very least. So let me find one other instrument that I can hold in my hand. Uh, <laughs> I've got, uh, I've got something that right here that is made out of recycled film cans. I mean, 
there's not a lot of film being used anymore, but um, they used to give away these plastic film cans and I put two of them together facing each other filled with rice. Then I got another two, another two, and another two. And I wrapped them in, you know, peel and stick color and I filled them with lentils. So, um, Um, we can, you know, a lot of us have made shakers and I'm not especially doing shakers today because I think a lot of us can do that if you just put um, some rice or some lentils or barley or something, if you want them to be really loud, use a bigger container and put in bigger things like popping corn or elbow macaroni or big macaroni or kidney beans and they're really loud. Um, so if you... Like for example, if you got this can, this can, put some beans in there, take them together and got that, um, you hear that uh, up in the parade. Now, um, this one has lentils, this one is filled with rice. So listen to this. You get different sounds. So what I'm going to do is um, bring my monitor over to the other room. And uh, I've got a microphone over there that'll make these things easier to hear. And we'll do some multitasking that makes us happy and that uh, doesn't put us in danger. Um, take some water. And now, um, as promised, <laughs> uh, I'm going to endeavor to play three instruments at once. Um, I don't know if you want to unmute um, some people, but if you want to do a drum roll, please, I'd appreciate it. <laughs> okay, so to, to play shakers or a cash shaker and a drum and a kazoo all at the same time, you put the drum between your knees, see here, a kazoo here. Shakers here. And I'm going to ask everyone to stand up. <laughs> um, okay, well, I um, I wanted uh, I wanted to let uh, well, people have a chance to ask any questions if uh, at whatever time that should be. But, um, um, should I take my cue there or just keep going because I've got more things to show in in, in the way of sound effects. I've got my microphone now that makes everything louder, so I'll, I'll just uh, take my cue. I've allowed the ability for people to unmute themselves. Just a reminder, once you're done speaking, please do mute yourself again so it doesn't get messy. Are, are, do you, sorry, did you want me to mute myself when people speak? No, I've just uh, allowed uh, the uh, participants uh, okay. the ability to unmute themselves oh, okay, if they cool. wish. So I'll, I'll just... Uh, should a time for some questions or suggestions or requests or, or anything. Um, I'll 
I suppose not. Okay, well, um, there's no, uh, there is no obligation. <laughs> so um, what I'm going to do is uh, we'll I'll, I'll look at that again, you know, um, in due time. And uh, right now, I just want you to see how these instruments, and I'm going to get a couple of the tin cans too, how we can you know, make really interesting music with things, little things like this that we made, and also things just as they are. What I'm going to do is record the sound of these things with a looper. Uh, it's something that you can get at a music store. But most people have a looper, and that just means that you can record something, and then you can listen to that sound, and while you're listening to it, you can record another sound, and then you can play both sounds back at the same time. And you can keep on doing that with lots of, you know, different sounds. And what they call each sound, say if I went, la 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 la, finished. Um, and then I played it back and press the button, you press play and it goes, la 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 la. <laughs> you listen to it back. That is called one track. So you can add another track of harmony or you can add as many tracks as you want. And um, there are these free recording apps like GarageBand and different things. This is not so much a workshop about those different apps, but I do want you to know what you can do with them. So I, I bet there's a zillion people that have these phones or these, you know, tablets, iPads, uh, laptops that can do that, but haven't thought about doing it. Well, there's a ton of ways, a ton of different apps, and they're all free. So if you just look for a multi-track recording or free multi-track recording, you can you probably have them on your device already and didn't even know you had. Um, I'm just going to get like a, another couple of cans there and maybe one or two hats um, that help with the um, the style of the music that I'm going to play. Okay, got my hats. One, two, three. And I've got another couple of cans. Now, what you have to do for one of the sounds that I want to make um, is uh, the sound that goes. Um, you have to scrape the ridges of something with a stick. And um, the instrument that has ridges, there's a lot of different um, instruments that have ridges that you can scrape to get that sound. Um, but the instrument is called a guiro. Um, it's usually made out of a, a piece of wood or, or a gourd, which is kind of like a pumpkin. Uh, uh, a pumpkin, <laughs> uh, but it's a lot... Uh, so much stronger than a pumpkin shell. Okay, let's see here. I just, uh, I happen to have a pair of the same scissors that I used um, when I was cutting the tape for the drum. I'm just going to use those scissors on the edge of this can and then get a little rhythm going. Can you hear that okay? It's a little muted there. Well, I, I can make it louder.
How is that? Oh, better. Thank you. Okay, sure. Okay, so that's the guiro, and that rhythm is called the cha cha or the cha cha cha. Now I'm, I'm going to add the part that would go. I'll just say with the hand drum、It、could be a conga drum or bongos. Okay.、Um, yes, it is. Yep. Good. So I'm going to add some other instruments now, and, and just add. And so everybody, any sound that you can imagine, you can make. So I'm just going to get some things from around here, you know, whatever is handy. Even the back of the can. Okay. Cowbell, just a tapping the back of the can, so that's three tracks. And then I did a track, just a tapping on my cheek with another rhythm. Now I'm going to turn the volume down a little bit, just so that、um, it doesn't get all、um, well too loud, so that it gets what they call feedback、um, until I take up the guitar. Then I want lots of that. Cha cha blues, like a Latin blues, and just so you know that、um, you know these things can fit in with real instruments. They're not just like light-hearted toys, and they are light-hearted toys. But you can play real music with real instruments. So I'm just going to adjust one wire, and I'm going to plug my guitar in and play along with that, just so you know that it's it's real. Okay. Thank、you
recycling money for schools and hospitals and all kinds of good things um, so you can kind of help to make the world better and have more fun and save lots of money too because you can make sounds with stuff like this that you can't get in a music store of course i did add some music store things here but that was just so you could hear them better a lot of that stuff like i said if you've got a phone or you know, some digital device, if all the stuff that I did there, you've got it too. Um, I'm just going to see if there are some, I mean, I've got lots more that I can demonstrate, but I, I just want to see if there are any questions or requests or anything like that. if you, you want to hear a different kind of um, music, um, I might have to change my hat. I've got one for country and cowboy songs and I've got another one for jazz. Um, that should do. <laughs> Just going to take a peek here. Hi Kim. Um, thanks a lot. <laughs> so 
I'm, I'm just going to hang out here. I, I don't mean to be too, you know, laissez-faire, but I want to give you a chance to say anything you want or ask anything you want. Um, otherwise, I've got tons more um, to to let you see. Um, but you know, I I want it to be open. So, team, um, does anybody want to unmute and um, ask anything at this time? Otherwise, I'm, I, I thought I would mix it up a little bit more. Just a reminder to all of our participants, uh, you now have the ability to unmute yourself. Uh, if you hover over your, uh, your place card there, uh, you'll be able to see uh, a mute or unmute uh, button. Okay. Oh, I'll ask. Um, I'll, I'll ask them. Um, easy team. Um, some, uh, some of my uh, friends and family, um, they just they they didn't open the link in time, and I don't know if it's possible for someone to you know, to you know open it up after the fact, like just to, to pop in at this time. Uh, do you know if that's possible? Uh, there's also music that I, have. I think I might uh, try again that just uses the the face as a tuned percussion instrument. And I might be able to play a bit of name that tune. Um, okay, I'm, I'm going to just add the drum. That I made as a bit of a jazzy background beat. And then I'm going to change my hat and play some jazz. as an instrument can be fun too. So I'm going to add a little bit of my voice just for fun. Oops, I 
I forgot to change hats. And since it's jazz, we need these. Now at home, if you want to snap your fingers, tap on anything you can get your hands on, feel free. I guess we'll have to mute for now, but maybe we can change that later. jazzy portion, and uh, I'm just going to take out some, uh, some more of the instruments. Uh, the first one being myself. I'm going to have to move the, uh, the monitor again just so you can see me a bit better. Well, actually, you know, um, first, first I'll do the, uh, the vocal part of this. I did a little bit of um, the tuned face percussion before but I think you'll hear it better now with this microphone. This is 94.1. I 
are still breathing national broadcaster coming to you live from Finland, Toronto. <laughs> okay, um, well, <coughs> excuse me, that was, <coughs> sorry, um, a bit of a tuned phase percussion demonstration. And um, <coughs> I know I've shown you before, but if there are people who are here now that weren't here earlier, um, I'll show you how to get the sounds by tapping your cheeks, and I'm not really hitting them that hard. It might sound like I'm playing hard, but I'm not. Um, I just use one finger, and when you open your mouth, you raise the pitch. Now this is going to be weird, but I'm going to come really, really close to the monitor so you can see the technique. I hope it's not a little too um, eccentric up here. I'm just going to come over so you can see better. So the the side of your face, your cheek, is like a drum skin, and when you open your mouth, you stretch the skin and you you tighten the pitch, or you tighten the skin and raise the pitch. So it's like this. And if you want, you can pop your mouth, but you have to be very gentle. Don't use the palm of your hand. It doesn't make any music, and plus it hurts. So just be gentle. Um, put your fingers together. And um, you get this. And, um, of course, if you, you turn the other cheek, you get two hands. And um, there's a really funny sound. It's hard to teach, but I'm going to show you anyway. This uh, friend of mine in school a long time ago um, showed me how to make it. If you can whistle, um, like when you whistle, you let the air out you know of your your whole you know, mid body and um you're you're breathing out you're you're exhaling through your your whistle right and if you can do that without breathing out just use the air inside your cheeks you have to make your cheeks kind of big like a like a, a chipmunk or a squirrel think of of, of squirrels up they're like that right their, their cheeks are full of acorns and whatever so if you do that with your you know mouth in the whistle shape weird eh and then if you start it with a tap on your cheek it kind of sounds like water dropping um anyway um really fun songs that you can make and you don't need any uh, equipment, but like I was showing you, if you want to get some sound effects or if you want to have more than one sound playing back at once, remember that's called multi-tracking. E every time you record, that's one track. And so if you wanted to, you could record 20 tracks, 30 tracks. You could be a whole orchestra of whatever sound you want to put together. And it's just a, an endless, wonderful time of experimentation. Um, so, uh, does anybody want to try anything? <laughs> um, I'm, uh, or if you, again, you know, the, you know, the door is open if you have questions. Otherwise, I've got uh, more stuff um, to, to show you. Um, but I just want to give you a chance and know that you're always invited. Um, I'm just going to um, move the monitor back there to the uh, table with all the stuff. So, sorry for the uh, theme time, uh, everybody. I'm just, uh, moving things around. Okay. Hmm. Getting back to Kazoo. The harmonica, the jazzy sunglasses, of course we need both.
Okay. Um, I'm just looking to see if anybody, you know, wanted to uh, share anything. And uh, are you? Sorry, folks. Okay. Very good. Okay. So if there if there aren't any questions, I have so much more stuff. So here we go. You saw how those different uh, cans sound if you have one or two or three or four, and the longer they are, the lower the note. Well, um, and I showed you the xylophone, the, the little xylophone, or you could call it a marimba, um, with the wooden keys, and they're kind of the same. Well, um, along the same lines, you can also make a drum, you know, not just on a can, but if you have... Um, a frame of wood, kind of like a wooden picture frame, you can wrap it in this same tape. Same stuff, same packing tape. And with um, one of these dollar store rolls of tape, um, this is really cool. You can, you can make at least 10 of these. You can get 10 drums for one dollar. It's really neat. Um, now the frame drum, the picture frame drum, you can use any size wood you want. Like you, if you have a broken hockey stick, you can cut it into four equal pieces, attach them together, make a square frame, and then wrap them, wrap them one way with the tape, and then wrap them the other way. Now I did this with a, a wider frame, and um, here it is. I I did a you know some decorative marks uh, with a blue marker on it. I was kind of thinking of just the what rhythm looks like, and uh, just thinking of different rhythms and even the rain, you know. Um, and so it's it's wrapped around just with lots of this stuff. Now, I'm going to let you hear it here, and then I'm going to come closer, and you can hear um, the bass. Again, the bigger or the, the longer things are, the lower the pitch. So just to uh, compare them, here is the new one that's around in between C and D flat. Let's see where it is now. Now it's C. It's C. It's middle C. See, it's um, it was a little bit higher before. It's already got a bit relaxed, um, in the few minutes, uh, you know, that have passed uh, since we tested it last time. Now this drum is really low in pitch. Wow! It's so low you can hardly hear. It. I'm gonna come up closer so you can hear this. Okay, ready? Let's see. I think you can hear it better. It's so low, it's almost below hearing. Now, if you squeeze it, sometimes you can raise the pitch. It's, I, I really like the sound. It, it is hard to identify the pitch exactly, but it's still a, it, they don't always have to be perfect pitches, right? They can just be cool sounds. Now, um, as far as um, 
the xylophones go, I've got another couple of xylophones. Um, they use the same idea. You have to find the spot of the piece of wood where you can hold it and it gets a good sound. And that's where you drill the hole and, and you make it rest. Except here, it's resting just on string. You'll see what I mean. Um, this is a, a, a bunch of pieces of wood and I cut them gradually to be longer and longer and uh, here's what they sound like. I'll get a, a heavier stick. Cool, eh? You know, it's really fun. Um, it almost looks like a living thing. Okay. <laughs> I play Halloween music on it. So this one um, is made out of wood that um, was used for hardwood flooring. This is actually three quarters of an inch thick, high quality oak flooring that's varnished and everything. And um, somebody uh, a block away from where I live just put it out on garbage day in, in a good strong box. So I, I brought it home and I did an experiment. And so if you want to make one of these, you just have to cut them to different lengths. But something else that is really helpful, I think you can see this. You see underneath, you see how it's curved? See if I hold it that way. I think you can you can see. And um, I cut them all that way. And I I got the idea just where my, my daughter was going to school. I, I visited her music class and saw the little xylophones that they have. They call them Orf xylophones. You know, named after a great, a great composer and teacher. Um, and they have them all over the place now. They, they, they have a really good um, method of teaching music, um, using instruments like these xylophones. And um, they're, they're great, but they're really quite expensive just for a, a little xylophone, um, not much bigger than the one that I showed you earlier. They, you know, they, they cost a lot of money. Um, this, it did cost me a lot of time, but the materials were free. So it cost about, be 20 cents for the string and a, a lot of time but it's fun now i know how to make a xylophone so this one was made out of oak flooring now this one here is not an oak um, this is uh, made out of uh, pine softer and lighter wood and uh, the same idea and you can see on the back um, I think you can, you can see that I, you know, I had to cut into the bottom and also, you know, make them of, of different lengths. Now, this one is the same, um, but uh, it has a different kind of sound. Now it's so long I've got to, uh, to hold it, so let's see here. Well, see if we can, uh, I think I'll just raise it, see if I can do this. Okay, I don't want to stand on the chair. Okay. 
Um, anyway, uh, I, I really yeah, enjoy playing them both. The fun thing is, if you make one like that, and remember, you have to drill the hole in you know, what I would call the sweet spot. You have to hold the piece of wood in such a way. Let's see, maybe the, the spoon might even behave the same way. Let's just see. You don't hear much here. Let's see. I'll get a bigger, bigger stick. Um, see here? Okay. There. You hear that? You hear that? If I hold it here, you don't hear it much, or if I hold it here, you don't hear it. But if you experiment and find a spot there, so that's the sweet spot. You would, if you wanted, you can just tie it with string there, and it will be like a wooden chime. Or if you want to, you can rest it on something right there and something else, you know, something soft. It would ring. Or drill a hole like I did, and either tie it like a that kind of a marimba, um, or put the hole and look. like this one here that we saw earlier, it's got the holes drilled in and so there are um, three kinds of marimbas and we've already seen um, the Pot and, and pan and um, utensil orchestra. Um, we've got the um, uh, music that you can make with your face. And what's interesting, remember this uh, turned into, uh, remember when it was just one can, it was a G note, it was this note here. when it was just a single can. And then when I added the other can, it went to this note. Um, in music, that's five notes away on the piano. It was G, then it went down to C. They, they call that a perfect fifth um, in music language. And it's interesting. You add a can, it, it gets a perfect fifth lower. Um, I'm wondering, what would happen if I added another can? It was G and it turned to C. Well, um, we're here to you know, prove the science, prove the experiment. Um, why don't I try that? Um, just a little water. Let's make this into more of a bass drum. Now, don't forget, uh, if you had only one can, you just put the skin on and that's it. But if you have more cans and you would like to have different notes, you could just keep on adding a can. So have a single can drum and then make one like this with two cans. So if you had three cans, you could have a single and a double. If you had three more, if you had six cans, you could have a single and a double and a triple. Let's try a triple right now. I'm going to open the can. So if you want to unmute yourself, I could use a drum roll. Here we go. And I'm just looking at the clock. Um, it's it's 11 minutes after 9. Let's see how long it takes me to do the whole thing. Just um, adding one can. I'm not using the sweep second hand. Maybe I should. Let's see here. Okay. I'm going to do that. Um, all right. I've got this on. Okay. How long will it take me just to attach it? Okay. Well, I don't hear any drum rolls, but um, you change your mind. I'd love to hear you. <laughs> all right. 17 seconds. Oh. Mark, be quiet. Just 
do your job. Okay, I'm going to see if I can do it quicker. Instead of putting a bunch of different pieces of tape, and I just get one big long piece of tape and see if I can do it this way. Okay. I'll do a drum roll with, with, with my voice. Okay. Well, wow, that took 50 seconds. Well, not even a minute. Not too bad. Okay. Now, um, I'm not asking for drum rolls, and I, I don't believe in gambling, but um, if you want to guess, not bet, but guess what pitch it was. Um, it went from C to G, that's five white keys on the piano or seven frets on a guitar. Um, well, ooh, okay. nice and low, nice and bassy, let's see. Wow. So cool. Um, it started out as G and it went down to C. Now it went down to the lower G. I don't have that note on the harmonica, but what the heck? I'll take okay. a sec here. I'm just going to confirm that. Yeah, that is a perfect fourth interval for you. Um, Music theory people, I'm going to get my guitar and confirm that with the third string of the guitar. The third string of the guitar played open should be the same note as this drum. So. is the same. You know what I'm going to do? Um, I'm going to bring these closer to the monitor so you can really hear them. Okay, so <laughs> here's the guitar. Now here is the drum. Pretty loud, eh? And it is a perfect key. Okay. All right, so um, get back to the laboratory here. So if you had six cans, you could have a single, a double, and a triple. And you'd wind up with a G and a C and another G. It would be great harmony. If you wanted, you could even, you know, take them together. Um, and, you know, have, a, or even have two together, they would be like, Tin can bongos. Well, um, let's see. Um, I've got another drum that I made with the same tape. And I'll show you, um, it's a bit of a miracle. It's, it's more than 20 years old. I think it's 25 years old. And um, let's see here. Um, yep. It's uh, made out of this really thick, really hard cardboard material. Um, if you know anybody does any kind of, you know, foundations or the the, the kind of work where you need to use concrete, um, if you, you know, use these cardboard tubes that you pour concrete into to make a post. Um, that is what this is from, um, the, those things, you know, for the people who've done this kind of stuff, um, those things are called sonatubes or so, sonatubes. And they have uh, flexible ones that you can bend, and they also have really strong ones that you can't bend, like they're really thick. And so what this is, it's just a slice, it's not even two inches wide 
um, as one of the really thick, strong sauna tubes. And I just, I cut it and then I, I wrapped it with good old packing tape. And um, I wrapped it again and again, um, a lot of layers, more, more layers than the four layers I did here, because this one is strong enough that you can play it with a stick, but you don't want to play it with a, a big heavy stick like this. You want um, something like a pencil. Or um, here, this is a um, a chopstick. You can use a wooden one, bamboo one, plastic one. This happens to be a plastic one. So I'm going to come up closer and let, let you hear um, what this <laughs> solar tube drum sounds like up close. Um, just, I mean, it works with your finger, of course. And now the cool thing is, um, the skin has relaxed over time. So now, um, if it, you, you can, it can be squeezed. And if you squeeze it, here's what you get. A higher pitch. So here we go. hear that that's a whole octave I mean if I you know played very carefully I could play a scale let's see uh, um, it gets very very relaxed but um it does give you all the pitches and even just to play a couple of notes it just makes it fun when you want to create a musical rhythm if you have more than one note, um, you can have more ideas. So that's just with, the, with your fingers. Um, chopstick, pencil. And I, again, um, I recommend that you don't use a stick on you know, the tin can drum because it's only a few layers. But this one, but tons of layers, you can use sticks. Just don't even go from the shoulder. Um, so there you go, An another kind of drum from a sonar tube. And if you don't have a sonar tube, if you had something like this shape, you could do it. Um, for, exa for example, if you had um, a tin can, what is this? This was frozen cooked lobster meat. And I, I say it because I, I want to make a drum with this one day, but you could make one like that with this. It wouldn't be as bassy because it's not as wide, but it's the same idea, um, a, a stretchable drum. You could put a lot of layers and use a stick. Well, um, well, we'll look at some other instruments now. Um, so this is something that I uh, mentioned as a possibility when I was introducing the program at the beginning. But you may recall, if you were there at that time, that if you blow over the top of a cardboard roll, you get a note, and then if you put your hand at the bottom of it, um, it makes it a way lower note. <laughs> and if 
you had different length tubes, you could have a kind of musical scale. So let's let's just throw one together. Um, and um, uh, uh, just a one one moment, um, folks. I'm going to turn I'm going to turn the monitor around and this way. I think it'll be a better yeah, a better perspective. Um, well, um, it looks like it's, it's all fine. Uh, let's see here. So let's uh, cut. Or, oh, I think the scissors might be back there by um, the guitar. Oh. Sorry, folks. It's a bit of another professor time. Thankfully, I've got another pair of scissors. Um, oh. Okay. <laughs> so, if I cut it in half, um, well, Let's try that. I'm going to cut it in half. See what happens. So, there we go. Okay. Now it's half as long as this one. So let's see. I've got um, I've got two long ones, one half size one. I'm going to cut one. I'm just going to experiment. Um, this one has this bit. Now, this one is, okay, I don't think I'm going to go any shorter than that. So I've got this, and okay, see here, okay, I see where that's going. Now, okay, so I'm going to make one in between. So I mean, the fun thing with this is you can just experiment. And uh, besides um, cutting them, you can even say a, a piece that you cut off, you can add that to another one. Let's see. It's that, that. Okay, now I've got I've got four like this. See here, so those are the relative lengths. What I would like, I wouldn't mind having five. And I think I might be able. To, oh, I do have five, but I want to have, but I want to have six. Just a sec here. All right, um, I'm going to put two of these together and add a little bit. So just to bear with me here. Let's see. Okay. Just gonna tape them together. Don't have to get too you know, geeky, pedantic, or explanatory. There. Just taping them together any way you want. There's no wrong way of taping together two toilet paper rolls. Unless you don't use enough tape, but then I see. So let's see another little piece. Make sure it's they stay together. All right. Now, but this one is exactly as long as that one. So I'm going to add another little piece. Let's see, like that, 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 and see what kind of notes we get. Um, too cool. All right, there. I'm going to cut a toilet paper roll in half. Add it to that, and then I'll have six different pitches. Okay. But just makes my heart go flutter with anticipation. Okay. Go there. Thank you. 
All right. Uh, mm. Come on. Let's see here. Um. Oh, this is going to be so cool. All right. Now I've got six different lengths of cardboard tube. I'm going to tape them all together and have kind of a pan flute. Let's see here. Is this the right hat for pan flute? Like this is my jazz hat. Well, I've got my jazz hat. I should put the shades on. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I think it's a little more apropos. Because it is a mystery. What pitches we're going to have and what it's going to sound like. So I think this goes with mysterious outcomes. Is there a soul, a soul in a toilet paper roll? I really think so. Is there a soul, a soul in the toilet paper roll? I think I read. Okay, that didn't take too long. So now we've got a pan flute. Suitable for mysterious music. So let's see. Um, oh, hmm. I might need some more tape, but I can always add. At least they're holding together. take um, this graceful moment to add another piece of tape just to make sure the mystery holds together. So just putting another piece. Now um, don't forget that when you do this, you, you take things out of the recycling stream and into the art stream. So uh, it, it, it does it does a lot of good in a lot of ways. All right, um, I could even put some more, but you get the idea. Um, now. Let's see here. I'm going to come up closer, have a sip of water on the way. Okay. Now it's not so mysterious. More like a blues brother. Okay. Um, let's see what's the best perspective for this. Oh, I might have to, let's see. Mix it up. I just want you to see the technique. If you want to, you know, put, remember I showed you that when you put your hand at the bottom, it lowers the pitch. You can still do that 
when you've got one of these to see how you can move your hand. So um, obviously you see how you can move your hand, but I just mean that you have to kind of be careful that you actually stop it like the, at the bottom. You've got your hand covering the bottom of each cylinder completely. And you know what, for that reason, I think uh, it would be best if I put another piece of tape there um, so that it would with withstand, you know, the, to see how it's kind of coming apart. I, if I push hard, see, I'm, I'm stressing it. So let me put some more tape on. Okay. Um, it's not like a, um, a slick, um, cooking show, um, except for cooking up music or cooking up sound. Um, so we have to uh, just roll with the punches. And I'm, I'm going to put tape along the entire surface as necessary to guarantee that it will hold together. The quality of toilet paper is not strained. Come on. There. All right. And when you're doing this, if you wind up with um, extra tape that's sticking out, you can you know, just cut it here and there, fold it under. Um, I. Uh, I know we, you don't want to be having it, <clears throat> having the tape, uh, you know, sticking to things. But what if you were walking by um, somebody wearing a, you know, beautiful suit or you know, beautiful shirt, blouse, whatever, and you were walking by innocently with your toilet paper roll pan flute, um, just delighting everyone around and one stray piece of tape <clears throat> was dangling dangerously and uh, attached itself to, you know, someone's beautiful suit, beautiful shirt, beautiful whatever they were wearing, and then maybe attached itself um, to the swizzle stick and their Kool-Aid, um, you know, all heck could break loose. And, uh, and you, you could also damage your beautiful pan flute. So make sure you've got you know, nothing dangling, neither tape nor particle. Okay. See here, I think uh, it's, it's solid enough. So let's see if it can handle a little bit of, um, yeah, it's got a lot more resilience here. So let's see. There, some funky tunes, and that you know, didn't cost anything except uh, maybe you know, five cents worth of packing tape. 
if you want, you can decorate them. And I'll, um, just for a, a moment, um, that was cool enough. I'll take a cool break. <laughs> um, be just a, a, an everyday guy. Now, um, if you want it to be even stronger, um, there is a kind of tape that's as strong as, almost as strong as duct tape. And um, it comes in pretty well any color you want. I've brought a little bit of this stuff and I'll, um, I think it would be good for you to know how to decorate these things um, if you want to. So uh, I don't have to tell you that you could, you know, use, uh, you could use markers and decorate these. And if you use permanent markers, then it will stay. Uh, the design will stay. Um, if you don't have permanent markers, um, you could, you know, decorate them any way you want. Um, but you could, you know, wrap them, you could make designs in paper and wrap them in that paper. Um, and if you wanted to make that um, more resilient, you could wrap the whole thing around again with this clear tape. And, um, and, and that would protect it. Now, um, I'm just going to get it over here. I have a, a few different colors. Let's see what I've got today. Um, some red. Some purple. And that would be good if I wanted to uh, maybe get some, you know, Jimi Hendrix, some some purple haze out of my two-string guitar. Do it that way. Let's see what else. Some oh, deep purple. Oh, on the water. Some silver. Let's see what else we've got. Um, so this stuff I have found that um, it's about um, two dollars for a piece about that big at the art store. It's got a big flat piece. Um, there are some places that sell it, um, sell the, the leftovers in these little coils. Um, if you are, uh, if you're interested, you could. I'll make some information available about uh, where you can find this. You still have to buy it, but um, it, it might be a better deal. Um, there are some places um, where you can get free art materials, some community centers. I know um, one is in the West End, and it is called Sketch, like the English word sketch, that making a, a drawing. Um, they have um, community art programs, and there are free art materials there. Um, there's such a place that has this kind of stuff. Um, here's a nice, um, here you, a nice light blue. So let's just see. I've got um, this drum here. What I'm going to do is just uh, show you how to wrap it with this peel and stick stuff just once. Um, you know, I'm not taking too long because um, we're, you know, we, it's like more like about maybe 20 minutes left here. Um, and Actually, just before I get into this, I, I do want you to see it at least uh, one time, you know, see how this stuff works. I'm going to do it very quickly. I'll just put a bit of one color on and uh, we'll go from there. Um, I'm going to ask just before I start, um, does anybody have any request, any color that you want me to use um, from the ones that I showed you? Silver, deep purple, smoke on the water purple. Lighter purple, I'll call it purple haze, um, or red, or the sky blue. Um, uh, we've got a vote from Kim. Uh, orange. Orange. Oh, yeah. orange. You mean orange like like the, the duct tape? Correct. No problem. How Canadian can you get? Okay, 
Sounds good to me. All right, orange it is. So um, also the, the good thing about that as far as um, environmental stewardship and avoiding waste is it's already partly done with orange. So I'll just continue the orange trend. <laughs> <laughs> Not in love with the idea of trend, <coughs> the way the word is used these days. But anyway, yeah, so I'm just going to go around as quick as I can. Get some orange action happening. Right. Man, this stuff is loud, <coughs> but so good. And you could build a house with this stuff. And I'm pretty sure, is it a Canadian invention? I, I thought it was. Anybody know? For sure, I, I think it's Canadian. Well, I'm not too sure. I think I can Google that. That's a good question. Just, just go to Red Bean. <laughs> Red, red green dot hoser. Okay. okay, let's see here. I think another couple of laps around here and that will make it an orange drum. a little bit of the, the beautiful silver rim. Hey, that's interesting. The lady who invented duct tape oh, yeah? uh, was Vesta Stout in 1943. Where? Uh, Illinois. Illinois? Really? Yeah. yeah. Wow. V Vesta? Like V E S T A, Vesta? Correct. Wow, stout. Stout, you mean like. Uh, S T O U S T O U D T. Oh, S T O U D T. I'm a little less. Very interesting. The more you know. Uh, cool. So, anyway, well, um, a woman invented duct tape. Thank you, Lesta. Well, maybe, thank you, Lesta. Is, is she still here? She's still with us? Who? I'm sorry? Is, is Lesta still with us or is she in um, heaven? <laughs> uh, I, I don't know. I can do right it further story. here. One. Well, I'm wondering. Now, this is very interesting. Um, I'm pretty sure that um, the, the mortal coil, photonically, does not affect the frequency. <laughs> the, the, I don't think the, the pitch is going to change because I made it orange, unless the uh, the tape has relaxed a bit more. So let's see what the pitch is now. Oh, it was G before, so... It's still G. So, um... Uh, G equals orange square, or something. One thing I uh, uh, I don't think I, I let people see is that even just with the one skin um, that's so narrow, um, after a while you can squeeze the edge a bit. Like this one here uh, has a very relaxed old skin. So you remember I had the range of a whole octave. I could play a whole. 
because it has a wide range of notes that you can play just by squeezing the skin and, and tightening the skin. Now, with these drums, they can't tighten as much because they're, they're not relaxed yet. Also, they're narrower, so they only have so much, even when they are relaxed, um, that you can do. However, let's see um, if it does any right now. Oh, it does a bit. Hat and the shades, and I'll, I'll bring it up. Um, maybe um, turn your volume down a bit. I'm, I'm coming over. Here we go. Drums, the old one that's 25 years old, made from a song or two. The one that's just a few minutes old, made with various tin cans. You also saw the one made with a frame. So with this miraculous material, um, you can make a ton of cool musical things. Now, um, another cool thing you can do with strings. I, um, you will recall, I'll just show you this one again that uh, this harp is made with fishing line and on one side a weed whacker. On the other side, the weed whacker is thicker and lower in pitch. And uh, it is, of course, you know, nylon plastic based. Um, the you know, rubber bands, of course, are rubber. Now, I did make uh, one really unusual instrument, um, and I'll just tell you a little bit about it before I show it to you. Um, it's uh, called a diddly bow. Like, diddly? Like, you don't know diddly? Or maybe bow diddly? Uh, you know, the famous uh, rock musician. I don't know where the name comes from, but it's from the American South, and all it is is just a, a plank, a two by four, any kind of a piece of wood. Um, you put two nails in it, and you stretch a piece of wire across it, and then you just tap it. Um, and it goes boing, 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 and it sounds like fun. And then if you, um, if you want to change the note, you get a a glass bottle or a metal pipe and you slide it along and you you can make the notes higher. Um, what uh, I did is I, I made it instead of just using a, a plank or a two by four, um, I made a wooden box so that it would sound a little bit louder. Now, I, I have to confess, it's been out on the front porch for a while. Um, 
So I'm going to have to um, tighten it up a little bit. Just a sec here. Um, uh, interesting. Hmm. hmm. Well, let's see how this goes. I might have to take out the pliers. I think some somebody might have uh, come. I don't know. Some raccoon might have been playing it out there. After all, um, raccoons do own the night in, in Toronto. Come on, you stay there. Come on. Okay, let's see. Now, now I have a, I have a new responsibility that I think I've just um, acquired: making stringed instruments that are raccoon-proof. If I leave them out um, all summer. Okay, cool. All right, um, we can I can hear that. I'm going to bring it up closer and let you hear it even better. And I'm going to get a, you know, get something. To um, to slide along it, uh, like some a glass or something, and um, and you'll hear the diddly bow, like you never heard it before. I think this is going to require um, a different hat. I'll get that too. That's Uh, okay, I've got the hat. Now I need the glass. And I'll get I've got the stick. Now let's bring it closer. Now um, this is this is really fun. Uh, I, like I haven't done a you know a, a zoom in my kitchen before, so you'll have to bear with me on the the exact perspective because I I wasn't expecting to to bring out this marvel of the universe um, for the world to see. Holy sheesh! So here it is. All right. Okay. Um, this is a pretty good stick. So the the diddly bow is it's just a wire, in this case, a guitar string, stretched over a board. Now what I did was, I just found some leftover plastic stuff from something or other, and by the way, all of this is garbage. I, on, on garbage day, I, would, I go out now and then and collect good wood um, from the shelves and things that people throw out. And uh, I made a box, and even, even the screws that hold the box together are recycled from other things. Uh, here's a bit of a, a broken souvenir Maple Leafs hockey stick. Um, here's a, another broken hockey stick from Ted Reeve Arena in the beaches area. Um, here's a, a hinge, you know, from some some other thing. And uh, here's a couple of guitar tuners um, from a, a guitar that someone was throwing out. So um, I, I kept it and I, I kept the tuners. Um, everything here. Uh, the the screws everything is um, is from the garbage except for this piece of metal here I did have to buy that anyway let's see so the the thing that makes this unique like you can change the pitch by rubbing a, a glass along it which I'll show you cool eh so here I'm gonna play some some bluesy slide deadly bow. Let's see here. Uh, all right. All right. I'm going to bring my head down low for the deadly bow, and you'll hear the blues. It'll grow and grow.
okay, etc. Now the thing that makes this one unique is that you can change the pitch that way. You can also change the pitch with this whammy bar. I you know, this stretches the string. So um, let's see here. cool anyway we can save the world with garbage and have so much fun while we do it and that's my story and i'm sticking to it are there any questions anything anyone wants to share that's so awesome i don't know how to tell you <laughs> oh, you're so kind <laughs> no, no.